Welcome to Fishtail Mag Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to all things artistic swimming. I'm your host, Liz Corman, and today I'm here with two-time U.S. Olympian Maria Koroleva. Maria was born in Yaroslav, Russia, immigrating to California at age nine, where she began her career with the Walnut Creek Aquanauts. She went on to compete with the junior and senior national teams, and then for Stanford University, culminating in a trip to the London Olympics in 2012. By 2016, Maria was entering her second games and working towards a master's in sports management at the University of San Francisco, which she would later earn in 2017. I was fortunate enough to catch up with her and talk about her Olympic career and how she has stayed involved in the sport since her retirement. Most significantly with your history is that you're a two-time Olympian. Very few Mm -hmm. athletes get to say that they go to multiple Olympics. And you not only did it, but did it on two duets where there were no teams. So it was even more selective. I want to hear a little bit. 2016 was a totally different selection, totally Mm -hmm. different experience. And your experience going there and being with Mayu and your duet partner, Mary Kilman. 2012 was the hardest year of my life. I will go down saying that all the time because it truly was. It was my first Olympics. We were training in Indianapolis in Indiana. It was really tough because it was the first year that the U.S. team didn't qualify for the Olympics. So Mm -hmm. emotionally, it was pretty tough, you know, training with the same girls. A lot of them I had been on junior teams with or I went to college Mm -hmm. with. And then to have the duet qualify and not the team, it was really hard. We were all moving along the same path together. And then I kept going and then their Olympic dream got cut. So that was really difficult. And in terms of the training, physically, it was very, very demanding because Maya is a very demanding coach. Mary and I were actually first paired together as a duet in September of 2011. So we were paired together only six weeks before the Pan American Games in oh Guadalajara, goodness. which is completely unheard of. You don't in put synchro- together, yeah, swimming. exactly. You don't put together a duet and compete in six weeks. Like that's that's so so fast. And then after those Pan Ams, there were a bunch of things going on with the Olympic duet selection. Then I had my back surgery in January of 2012. Mm-hmm. So we really didn't have much time to train together before the Olympics, which again is unheard of. So I think considering all of that, when I watched our swims from those Olympics in London, I'm so proud of how far we came. We wrote a new free duet program in May, and then Mm -hmm. the Olympics were at the end of July. So again, having to write a new program very, very quickly, training it, competing with it, it was very fast. And therefore, the whole training cycle had to be condensed into a couple months. Physically, it was really tough. Yeah, yeah and that's including polishing the routine, which is probably the most time-consuming yeah. aspect. Well, and also, I remember competing with that new routine. We went to the Spanish Open, U.S. Open, and Swiss Open, mm-hmm. and we had just written the routine, so it's not like it was good yet. And I remember feeling like embarrassed because we had just written it. You can't expect for it to be perfect. It's like you're going out into the world, you're already competing. So you want to present something good. But just because we had written a new routine, it couldn't have been that great at the time. And that's such a tough position when you're in an Olympic year to have that opening feel so unsteady. Yeah. But ultimately, I think the the tale for you is perseverance that you got through the injuries you got yeah. through the process of selections and mm-hmm. and lots of elements that were up against you talk a little bit about the difference between the training the process of getting there and the actual competition in Rio which I was so glad to be a part of that whole process with you Rio the the whole 2016 year was very different than 2012 and actually in 2012 I forgot to mention, so aside from like the training stuff that I had to deal with, my Mm -hmm. dad was very sick at that time. He had hepatitis C and cirrhosis of the liver. So we were training in Indy. My dad lives in California. So being away from my family was really difficult. Mm -hmm. I went through a really difficult breakup a a couple months before the Olympics and I lost my like main support system. I felt like I was in survival mode, to be Mm -hmm. honest, before the Olympics. And 
I feel like I wasn't as excited for the Olympics as I could have been because I was just hanging on by a thread mentally right. and emotionally. And then, of course, there's the, the physical part of it. By the time we got to London, it's your first Olympics. Of course, you're bright eyed and bushy tailed and everything <laughs> looks so cool. And I mean, the pool at in London was so cool. Yeah, The stands went up all, all the way to the ceiling. It was so loud. The the All of the synchro events were like completely sold out. And actually, yeah, it looked really Mary, grand on TV. Yeah, yeah, it felt so Olympic. And even though we had competed at that pool at the qualifier only a couple months before the Olympics, it felt different. And it was so cool. And actually, Mary and I drew first for the tech duet. Yeah, I remember and that. Yeah, and the tech duet is the first synchro competition. So we were literally the first ones to oh. open the competition and I remember standing in the car oh, like stressed out just thinking about that I know like, I know <laughs> walking out on deck and opening up the freaking Olympic oh. yeah and remember we were standing in the last call room and they were you know when they do like when they like engage the audience or whatever mm-hmm. so they were doing this like countdown with the audience yeah and the I was like is, I the felt hype like is I was intense when they do that they like yeah. play the drums and Oh. Yeah. And I remember standing there being like, I think I'm going to pass out. I might like throw <laughs> up right now. So that was, I mean, it was, it was just so cool. Your first time around is so cool. I think we were in 10th after prelims mm-hmm. and then we got 11th overall. So we were a little bit disappointed because we knew that we could have done better. But overall- For complete podcasts and even more original content, Go to fishtailmag.com to sign up for our monthly subscription service. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook under the handle fishtailmag. We hope to see more from you, but for now, this is Liz Corman with Fishtail Mag, where we are dedicated to all things artistic swimming.